Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and this is my best of video where we take a look back at the prior 12 months and see what I like the best out of all the products I reviewed here on the channel. We look at a lot of stuff throughout the year, uh, and a certain number of things kind of rise above the top, maybe because they're really cool, maybe because they're very unique, or some things are just good and worth uh, giving some credit to. So we're going to step through all of those things. Uh, this might actually be a very good gift guide, so if you have people in your life who never know what to get you, uh, maybe have them watch this video for some ideas. We've got some inexpensive stuff, some stuff in the middle, and a few high-end things as well, so hopefully there will be enough for everybody uh, in this video. So we're going to begin with the television that I bought last year, an LG OLED TV. Uh, this is the C7. It's been replaced already by the C8. And the reason why we're covering this now is that it was uh, purchased after my last Best Of video. And one of the things with OLED that makes it so unique is that it has a perfect black level on it. When you've got a scene that is dark, uh, it will be dark. You won't see any backlight bleed coming in like you might on an LED or an LCD television. It's just an amazing experience. I have not been this happy with a TV since I bought my Pioneer Plasma a decade ago. This thing is just awesome. And if you're in the market for a TV and you don't mind spending a little bit more, uh, these LG OLEDs just are amazing. And the 55-inch versions now are getting uh, into the twelve dollars to $1,500 territory. So well worth an investment because it looks awesome. Uh, there is some image retention occasionally on the set. I haven't had any burn-in issues with it. Uh, I did have one scare that I covered on the Extras channel a little while ago, which will be in the master playlist down below. Uh, but altogether, just a great purchase and something I've been very happy with. Now this next product is one of those unique products that I think might be very good for consumers who are looking to get a VPN but don't have the technical wherewithal to set one up. This is the Amplify Teleport. Uh, what it consists of is a router along with a little teleport module. And once you pair the teleport module with the router, you can take that teleport module anywhere in the world, plug it in, connect it up to Wi-Fi or Ethernet, and it will build out a hotspot and tunnel its way securely back to your home network. So you can get on uh, all your local stuff at home. You can print to your printer, for example, or access your network attached storage. It basically is a VPN with practically zero configuration. It is really just plug and play. Uh, in the review, I took it over to a local McDonald's and we were able to connect through their Wi-Fi with one of those captive portal things you have to log into and it was pretty seamless. It just worked and I think for a lot of folks who are looking to get into their home network while away, uh, this is a very easy way to do it and it might make a great gift, especially if you're supporting family members with some more complicated VPN solutions. So check out the review linked down below in the master playlist. Now this next product will appeal to gamers of a certain age. It is the Super NT from Analog. And this is a device that allows you to play your old Super Nintendo games on an HD television. Now there are a lot of devices that do that, including uh, even some from Nintendo, the Super Nintendo Classic Edition, for example. But this device is replicating the original hardware in a very unique way using a field programmable gate array processor. And the result is near perfect, if not perfect, replication of the original right down to the original timings. We found that even the uh, button lag from the time you push a button to when something happens on screen is about half of what the Super Nintendo Classic is. So they've done a better job with this than even Nintendo did with their own product, bringing these classic games modern. Uh, the one thing it does require, though, are the original Super Nintendo cartridges. Uh, there is an unofficial firmware that you can load on to get those games loaded off of SD card. But I recommend actually picking up a flash cartridge called the SD2SNES. I'll put a link to this down below in the video description as well, uh, because that cartridge has come a long way and it will now replicate a lot of the specialty chips that were on the original Super Nintendo, including the Super FX chip. And it will now, I believe, support save states in certain games as well. So you can get a very good replication of the original experience, yet get some additional modern accoutrements, including the ability to play games off of flashcards, for example. So definitely check it out. Uh, link will be down below in the video description to the product and to the review. Now, the next item is the DJI Mavic Air. This is a very small form factor drone that's got a 4K camera on board. It is fantastic, feature-packed 
very stable and easy to fly. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I've even started doing some autonomous flight modes with it with an add-on app that I purchased. I'm really uh, quite happy with the drone. And if you're looking to get into drones, uh, this might be a great one to start with because it is so portable and easy to use. Now this next item is an upgrade to something we had on this list a year or two ago, and that is the GPD XD Plus. And what it is, is an Android game console. It looks a lot like a Nintendo 3DS in its overall industrial design, but you can install uh, just about any Android emulator you can think of onto this thing. Now, it won't do the modern stuff like the GameCube or the PlayStation 2, but it does a very nice job with the Dreamcast, the PlayStation 1, and then all the other stuff from the uh, 90s, 80s, and 70s below those consoles. It's a great device. Nintendo 64 works great on it, too. And I use it a lot here in the house to stream my gaming PC as well. So it's got a lot of versatility to it. Uh, they've improved the Wi-Fi on it significantly in addition to giving it a bit of a bump on its processor too. So altogether a really fun Android device, especially if you're into retro emulation. And speaking of emulation, you might like these little retro cases for the Raspberry Pi that we got in from RetroFlag recently. Uh, this is their newest one. It's a, a Sega Genesis replica. I did a mini review of this on the Extras channel. And what you do is mount your Raspberry Pi inside of this thing, and you've got yourself kind of your own little mini Sega Genesis that can run all the things that you can run on a Raspberry Pi. It is very well put together. It's very easy to uh, get everything inside of it. They even have a little storage area for your cards and other doodads if you want. And they've made some nice improvements actually on the Genesis one you can see in my review. They have a Super Nintendo version as well as a Super Famicom version. They also have one that looks like the original NES. And what's cool about these is that the switches work on them. So when you uh, flick it on, it will actually boot up the Pi. And then when you flick it off, you can configure it with a script so that when you turn off the case, it will actually properly shut down the Raspberry Pi and not just cut power to it. Uh, so you can check out my full reviews link down below in the master playlist for more information on these. But these are really just well-built, high quality, really cool stuff. And they also have controllers you can plug into them as well that also replicate the originals. And you all know I love mini PCs, and my pick of the year for that category uh, is the Intel NUC with the J5005 Gemini Lake processor. It's unfortunately got a very long name, so I'll put all of that down below in the video description along with the videos that I did with that product. But it is a very powerful PC for the price. In fact, you can get uh, the PC, 8 gigs of RAM, and storage bundled together on Amazon for well under $300. I think right now it's like $280 bucks to get the computer all ready to go. Put Ubuntu on there and you've got yourself a really decent little PC. We found it handles Plex very well, including hardware transcoding. It's got dual HDMI outputs that can drive a 60 hertz display at 4K. Unfortunately, it doesn't support uh, HDR, but everything else is fine on it. And I think for a PC to play around with or maybe act as a little Plex or media server, it's definitely worth considering and you certainly can't beat the price. Now this next pick is a product category with two products in it. These are standalone VR systems. Uh, the first one is very affordable, the Oculus Go. You can get it for about $200 or less for the 32 gigabyte version. And I think it's a very nice entry point for virtual reality. It's a standalone system. You charge it, put it on your head. There's no phone to connect or anything else. You get it up on your Wi-Fi, install a couple of apps and start having some fun in VR. Uh, the media watching experience is a lot of fun on there. Uh, there's one app that I installed that lets me replicate a movie theater and it really feels like you're in a theater, a nice immersive environment with a big screen and the lighting effects all seem to work very nicely. So it does some pretty decent VR for the money. Uh, but if it's not enough and you want to go to something a little bit more than that but don't want to buy the expensive PC setup, then check out the Mirage Solo from Lenovo. It costs about $400. And what's cool about the Mirage Solo is that it can track you in 3D space. So in addition to tracking your head movement and the position of the controller, you can also move your head around and look closer at things or walk around a little bit as well. Uh, one of the things that I was able to do in my full review of the device was turn off its safety controls and I was able to walk around in this Blade Runner game uh, much farther than I thought I'd be able to. It's really cool and it's a very nice headset. The image quality is a little better. It's got a faster frame rate. I believe it runs at 75 frames per second on uh, the Mirage Solo versus 60 on the Oculus Go. It is a really nice uh, entry point again to VR that's a little bit more than the entry level Oculus. 
Uh, next year, we're probably going to see a lot more. Oculus has their own system kind of in the same category, I think, as where the Mirage Solo is that will probably come out next year. So there's just a lot of fun and cool things happening right now in VR uh, in this standalone space. And if you're looking to get into it but don't want to spend a lot, I think the Mirage Solo or the Oculus Go might be fun products to play around with for the next year. And another product with Go in the name caught my eye this year. This is the Microsoft Surface Go. It is a Windows tablet in a very nice form factor. It's about the same size as an iPad 9.7 and it runs the full version of Windows 10 on uh, what is essentially a KB Lake Core M processor. So it's fanless, it performs really nice for the price point of about 400 bucks for the entry level version. And if you're looking for Windows in a really convenient form factor, this is definitely something worth considering. And you can check out my full review to see what you can and can't do with it. But overall, I've been very pleased with this. Now I am a big fan of the Google Home, which is a voice assistant that I think is probably the best in the market uh, just because I think Google's infrastructure allows them to answer more questions more easily. It does a lot more of what I need done uh, with a simple voice command. And now they've got versions with screens. We looked at the Lenovo Smart Display a little bit earlier in the year, and I recently picked up the uh, Google Home Hub on a uh, discounted price uh, during Black Friday. And it's just a great system because it does exactly what the voice version of the product does, but now you have a display to work with. I love the fact that I can have multiple kitchen timers going. I've got uh, family photos from my Google Photos account streaming through. It's even smart enough to answer some complex questions like, hey, when is that package from Amazon getting here? It can go into my email, find the uh, package number, go out and do a track, and then tell me where it is and put up all the information on the display. It's a very smart system, and I really like having that really effective voice assistant paired up with the screen. We'll have a review of this particular home device on the channel very shortly. And the last item this year is the Apple Watch Series 4. I had an original Series 0 watch from back in 2015 that I upgraded from. So for me, this was a substantial upgrade going to this one. It's a heck of a lot faster. The voice searches are almost instantaneous. And I've been using the watch a lot over the last couple of years to do just about everything that I do in my life. So I unlock my doors with it now, which is really nice to be able to just do a voice command and have the door open for me. I do Apple Pay all the time. I use it to talk on the phone when I'm juggling the kids or doing other things in the the house. Uh, it's just been so many little things that have added up to a lot for me with the watch and the new one here uh, is just spectacular. Uh, that said, if you have a Series 3 watch, you have most of the features that the new Series 4 has just with a smaller screen. Now the big feature that is going to be implemented very shortly is the ECG feature that will make use of this metal portion you see here on the bottom of the watch. And what it will let you do is measure your heart rhythm uh, these watches have been able to measure your heart rate for a while now, but not the rhythm. And the rhythm is really important to measure because a lot of people have a condition called AFib that they don't know that they have, and the watch might actually help people prevent a stroke if it discovers something with your heart rhythm that you didn't know about. Uh, so I think that's going to be a very important feature of the new watch. And I know a lot of people suffering from AFib are really looking forward to having the ability to take a reading uh, wherever they go and at least get some sense as to whether or not they should be seeking out uh, medical treatment. So that feature again will be activated very shortly, probably with a software update coming up very, very soon, probably the next couple of weeks. So that is my list of things that I found to be the best of the best this year. I'd love to hear from you about anything that you thought that should have been on this list that I've reviewed down in the comments section below. And if there's anything else out there that I haven't looked at that I should, uh, definitely let me know and I'll see if I can get it in to do a full review as well. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thank you all for watching and thank you so much for your support over the years that uh, makes all of this effort possible. I really enjoy what I do and I love sharing uh, what I learned with all of you too. So keep those questions and comments coming and we'll have a lot more to come here on the channel. Until next time and until next year, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.